Ms. Stratton. Okay. And Mr. Mullen. And Ms. Camarena. Okay, so missing tonight or today is Paula Thomas, is that correct? Yes. Uh, we'll start with uh, one minute opening statements and we will um, start uh, with Mr. Williams. Good morning. Can you hear me? My name is Don Williams. I am a proud graduate of Burgess High School, 1969. Hopefully that this, thank you, thank you. Hopefully that this meeting will continue the good fortune that I've had since being here at Burgess. First of all, I'm proud to say that I was the first black student body president here at Burgess in 1969. Also the first black student to receive an appointment to the United States Military Academy from Burgess. So hopefully by being here today, I'll be the first black elected judge in the county of El Paso, and that will go to Burgess. I have a background of being an Army brat. We came here at the end of my junior year. I was not happy, but it was the best thing that happened. I ended up becoming a JAG officer, went to U uh, UTEP, University of Texas School of Law, and at this point in time, I have to stop. Thank you. Good morning. Um, thank you all for being here this morning. My name is Lucida Flores Camarena. I'm a lifelong uh, resident here of El Paso. And I want to thank the students at Burgess High School because my path to where I'm sitting right now started in a very similar way. I was very involved um, in politics when I was in high school. I was in a debate. And, and I applaud all of you that are here this morning for taking that interest. I think it's a it speaks well of your government teacher, of your school, and I applaud each of you. Um, I want to tell you that I'm here today because I care about the families of El Paso. And I also care about who sits on a particular bench. I think when you are discussing and deciding who you need to vote for for this bench, you need to also see if they're a good role model. Because I think a judge needs to be a role model. The, the demeanor of the courtroom needs to start with the judge. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, very, thank you very much. I'm Phil Mullen, and it's good to be back in the hood. I grew up uh, in Meadowview Drive near Silvis and graduated from Burgess in 1965. Uh, remember government class with Mrs. White where we ran the, uh, uh, the Johnson forces in the 1964 election. That's how far back I go in democratic politics. Uh, I've also, uh, I'm an army grad, that's how I got here. Also graduated from a Loyola University in New Orleans and the University of Texas School of Law. And I've been licensed in El Paso or in the state of Texas as an attorney since 1972. I served four years in the Jack Corps active duty and 16 years in the reserve and retired reserve lieutenant colonel. And I've been in private practice now since 1979. Uh, been in this business for nearly 40 years. I look forward to uh, serving in this, in this capacity as judge of the 388th District Court. And I look forward and hope for your support and vote on May 29th. Thank you. Stratton. I'm running for the 388th Judicial District Court because it is a very important court in our county. Family court is more likely to touch every person in this room than any other court that we have. Lots of us aren't ever going to go to criminal court, lots of us aren't ever going to go to the civil court because we're not going to have those kinds of disputes. But with the divorce rate being what it is, probably every person in this room is going to end up in the 388th or one of the other family courts in El Paso, either directly or indirectly. In El Paso, we have a different definition of family. We are a community that is family rich. We do not just have mom, dad, brother, and sister that are your family. It's mom, dad, brother, sister, cousin, uncle, grandma, godfather, 
everybody is part of your family, and the decisions that are made in the court of the Creative Judicial District Court will touch so many people, and you have to have an understanding of what it takes to make decisions in that court at highly dramatic times in people's lives. All I've practiced is family law during my entire career. I care about families, the best interests of the children, and I'm asking for your vote, vote on May 29th. Thank you. Questions of the candidates today will be Abraham Sandmacher, and uh, we will uh, we'll have you start. Hi. This first question is for Mr. Williams. If elected, what will you do to handle the growing number of domestic violence cases stemming from returning veterans from Iraq and Afghanistan? How should these cases be treated in comparison to cases in the civilian population? Students, please ask it again slower. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. If elected, what would you do to handle the growing number of domestic violence cases stemming from the returning veterans from Iraq and Afghanistan? How should these cases be treated in comparison to cases in the civilian population? Wow, that's a great question. First of all, let me explain that I am the chair of El Paso Lawyers for Patriots, which is a committee of the El Paso Bar Association. I'm also the family law uh, subcommittee chair at the state level, Texas Lawyers for Texas Veterans. One of the things that I want to do with this court is that I want to orient it toward the military because right now we have about 35 judges and none of them can do what I want to do. We have a Veterans Mental Health Treatment Court that are treating the criminal cases therapeutically instead of criminal. I want to add the family court because most of the people in that court, they have family law problems. So most of it is domestic relations. So instead of treating them criminally, we want to treat them therapeutically so we can make these families whole again. This next question is for Ms. Uh, Stratton. You have made references in the past of El Paso's differing family dynamic. Would you elaborate on how the family dynamic of El Paso is different from that of other parts of the state? Sorry, am I going through past? No. <laughs> Parts of the state and how you are best qualified to address these differences. All right. Um, as I was saying, that very quick introduction. We are a family-rich community. Um, as you move away from El Paso, you will not see as you go towards New Mexico or as you go towards Indiana or even as you go further to East Texas, you are not going to see the type of family units that we have here in El Paso where you've got the extended family and even friends so involved in what happens at a very basic family level. And in El Paso it's fantastic that we've got that because children who have that kind of support coming from so many people raises better children. The more, the more people that a child has to love them, the better off they are. Now, when they end up in a family court, you have to have an understanding of those human dynamics and the fact that people are going through the most traumatic time of their lives. And we have to take those highly charged emotions and change the whole direction for a family and apply it to a law book. As I had said before, I have spent my entire career practicing family law. I have an understanding of exactly how a judge needs to be compassionate and at the same time apply the law logically. Thank you. Thank you. I guess because of the nature of this particular court, the most important and the first priority, in my opinion, is getting the court back on track. Right now, this court handles only 17% of the family docket, and the family docket comprises over half of the civil docket here in El Paso County, Texas. There's only three judges that handle them. One judge handles 50% of the docket, another judge handles a third of the docket, and this judge handles 17%. So my first order of business is, when I take office, is to physically go to the other judges and say, I'll take the third and hopefully get an associate judge back to help cover that backlog. That's what we need. That's the first priority, is to get everything on track so that we can handle matters the very important matters for the families of here or here in El Paso County. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, this next question is for Ms. Camarena. Do you feel that requiring 
Honor judges to campaign for office and to fundraise in order to do so in Texas has an effect on the judges' impartiality. What, if anything, would you recommend as an alternative? I'm going to ask you to repeat the question. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear it. Do you feel that requiring judges to campaign for office and to fundraise in order to do so in Texas has an effect on the judges' impartiality? What, if anything, would you do, uh, recommend as an alternative? Okay. This, act, this question has actually come up a few times on the campaign trail, and, and I appreciate the question. I understand um, how somebody could possibly think that uh, it would affect uh, a decision in the court, but I'm here to tell you that um, when I've had fundraisers, I don't promise anybody anything other than I'm going to apply the law in a manner which is appropriate to the particular facts of that particular case. I don't promise anybody anything for donating to my campaign, for volunteering for my campaign. So I think that um, anybody who's running for this office, whether it be this particular court or one of the other courts, you have to keep in mind the fact that you are running for a judicial office, and that you will be expected to be impartial and to always uphold the judicial canons. There's a judicial code of conduct, and that judicial code is what governs all officers of the court. So, thank you very much. Thank you. We will now have one minute closing statements, starting with Mr. Drew Williams. Thank you. I'd like to thank you once again for being here and for inviting us. I think I'm the best qualified for this particular court. I have had five appointed judicial positions. I'm the only person on this desk that has judicial experience. I'm a family, a former family associate judge. That means that the associate judges do all the work. The particular court that we have right now does not have an associate judge. So I can step in tomorrow and make an impact without having an associate judge. There will not be a learning curve. The things that I want to do, I am doing outside of the court right now. We have received state and national recognition for the programs that I have initiated. So at this point in time, ladies and gentlemen, the, the choice is clear. If you want something done, if you want it done right away, you have to have somebody who already has a role, who has over 20,000 family court actions. There will not be a learning curve. You'll get your money's worth if I have to start tonight at midnight. Thank you, and I appreciate your support. Thank you again for um, this opportunity to speak to you. I have been um, a native El Pasoan, and my family and I came back about 10 years ago to this community that both my husband and I were raised in and love. And we came back with the idea that we were going to give back to this community. This is the reason that I am running for this particular court. I've been married for 20 years. I have two sons. We're raised in this community. And I can tell you that it is important to me, especially in light of the atmosphere that has been raised recently by some of the public officials, that the judges in this county be looked to as role models and that we are able to stand before the students that are sitting over at that table and actually put into practice um, the oath that we take, that we are actually able to be people that they look up to, that they want to be like. That is what I'm asking, uh, that's why I'm asking for your support. Thank you very much. the opportunity and to be here this morning and for all of you to come out on your Saturday morning giving up your time to listen to us uh, pontificate for a little while. To be very honest with you, after 40 years in this business, I don't think I have a word in her. I think I'm perfectly capable of taking over on that bench, uh, having served as the family law bar president for the last three years and serving in the military, serving in this community for as long as I have. So when I take office, the plan is to go back to a system that's already in place with the other two courts. There are family court judges that have family court associate judges. This court doesn't have it, and it needs it as well as a district judge who knows what he or she is doing. We're all qualified candidates up here. There is, 
we have to be a lawyer for five years to be, uh, be able to be a judge. So with 40 years in this business, I think I have to go ahead and get, hit the ground running, and I appreciate your support and your vote on May 29th. Thank you. Thank you. Out what I've kind of been saying over the last two opportunities that I had to speak. Um, the family court is a very, very important court, and you've got to, as the judge of that court, watch out for the best interest of the children. You've always got to put them first. And you've got to do that when you're going ahead and figuring out what you're going to do with this family that is now breaking up. And when this family's breaking up, they're having to figure out a lot of things, and sometimes kids feel that impact. Most of the time, kids feel that impact. It is up to the judge to make sure that when they are ruling, that what they are doing is making it as easy as possible for that family to go ahead and um, go on with their life and their new directions with the least impact to the children. If I am elected, my court will never turn into some sort of a circus where you've got people humiliating each other when they're going through a divorce, being derogatory to each other. I will make sure that everybody always treats the other party with dignity and respect, and above all, I will make sure that I am fair and those children are always watched out for. Thank you, Mr. Adams.